For our sample of a park from a lower class neighborhood, we use Julian B. Lane Park. This park is across the street from a section of government housing and in between the West Tampa Boys and Girls Club and Tampa Preparatory School. This park is well shaded and has a lot of benches with an otherwise very simple setup. There are basketball, racquetball, volleyball, and tennis courts set up on either side of the sidewalk that runs through the park. Beyond the courts, the area on either side of the sidewalk opens up to fields with a simple playground set in stands. Very few trash cans and the bathrooms are small and ill-kept. We found two teenagers in the park who lived there to interview. They both attended Blake High School and had lived in the area for a year and a half. Neither one of them felt that the neighborhood was safe, and the Latina girl expanded on that by explaining that there were a lot of deals, shootings, and robbing. When asked to name something positive about their neighborhood, the only thing they could decide on was that they both think downtown Tampa is pretty. It's interesting that their one positive is actually located outside of their area of the city. In the remainder of our time, we interviewed three young black women. They were all sitting on a rock across from the basketball courts when we arrived, talking and laughing. A small child was playing near them, wearing a tank top, shorts, and angry bird slippers for shoes. Most of the girls' clothing was very light and revealing. One of the women said that she didn't know her neighbors, but another woman said that was just because she was antisocial. She knew all of her neighbors. The third woman had never really thought that much about it before. Two of the women said they felt the neighborhood was generally safe, but the woman that knew their neighbors answered the question with, a, with an emphatic no. We asked her to expand on that, and she said that if you look at people funny, they'll fight you. She said there weren't a lot of major crimes, and there were break-ins and property thefts. She gave us an example, saying that her father's house had been broken into and the Xbox and flat-screen TV had been stolen and her shoes had been rifled through. All of the women said that they liked their neighborhood because it was home. They had never been anywhere else. I think one of the social theories that our visits to this park exhibited most strongly was the lack of social mobility in the lower class. The vast majority of the people we spoke to at Julian B. Lane have lived in that area for their entire lives. They consider it home. We used West Park Dog Park for our working class neighborhood park. West Park is located on North Occident Street, which is between Hillsborough Avenue and Sly near the Tampa International Airport. It is located right in the center of a working class neighborhood. The park is on one side of the road and the houses are on the other side. 70.5% of residents in this area are Hispanic, and a few of our interview respondents commented on the Latin roots in the community. Two of the individuals we interviewed actually were Hispanic and spoke very little English. Most of the houses in this neighborhood are not large and are pastel colored. Many of them look to be in poor maintenance conditions. The park is not very impressive when you first drive into the parking lot either. The first thing you see is the baseball and softball fields which are ill-kept. The grass is thin and dead and the dirt has clearly not been touched in a while. In the middle of the field stands a concrete building with a concession stand that is closed on weekdays and bathrooms. The bathrooms appeared to be in disrepair. There was a large torn tarp hanging over the entrance to the ladies room, small and mulched with rubber bits. It is surrounded by a chain link fence with large locks on every gate, but the fence is low enough to be climbed over easily. The playground is never as crowded as the dog bark dog park which is divided into two areas, one for dogs over 30 pounds and another for smaller dogs. The area is very expansive and well shaded, which helps to explain why it is a haven for dog lovers in the Tampa area. The area for dogs over 30 pounds has large tubs and hoses to wash dogs in, as well as several hurdles and other structures for dogs to jump over and run through. There are a lot of ordinances posted all over the park. There was a police car idling in the parking lot. It was joined by two others after a few minutes, and all three left during our interviews. Do you know many of your neighbors? No. I don't. I know one of them. Mm -hmm. I know I'm good to speak to them, but I don't know them. stump over there? Mm -hmm. Someone came in in the middle of the night and cut down the tree. Hmm.
you know why? Because no. they uh, were making a lot of noise and the people in the park were asking to keep their voices down. Wow. Hmm. Do you think, like, have there been a lot of crime reports, like, besides the tree? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody yeah. put some poison in. Hmm? Remember somebody threw some poison well, they in? Thought, yeah. They thought there was. So they weren't sure. Breaking into the, to the dog. breaking into the things there every now and then, the, yeah. the, the work cabinets. Mm -hmm. Mostly it happens in the summertime, I think, when the people are out of school and they don't have anything else to do, and so they're up to, you know, mischief yeah. in the summertime. What do you think are like, the major problems in this neighborhood? I don't have no problems around my neighborhood, around where I'm at, but some of it is just not good. If I had a complaint, it would be about the way the people don't take care of the animals out there. They, they're never kept on, you uh, know, confined in their yards or on leashes. They walk around the streets a lot. And, and, uh, here, all the dogs are taken care of, and, the, and our main concern is the care of the, the animals. Dogs. Yeah, abandoned dogs here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They figure it's a dog park and people come out and pick them up. Hmm. Is it just dogs or are there other animals? Well, we mainly see dogs. I guess cats. There's some chickens over there. Yeah, like we hear chickens grow. <laughs> chickens got roosters. That's that's fun. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, last question is, uh, what do you really like about this neighborhood? People are great. I enjoy the bodega and go to the restaurants. I enjoy the park. And uh, all in all, it's a great place to be. I don't live in this neighborhood, but I would say one thing about it it's very convenient. Yeah. It's convenient to Dale Mabry to fly, to water. In general, there was an air of contentment despite some of the less appealing conditions in this working class park and neighborhood. We selected Davis Island as our middle class park and observed stark differences between this park and the other two. Davis Island is a natural archipelago that has been expanded since the 1920s, first intended as a private resort equipped with three hotels, a golf course, swimming pool and an airport. Davis Island is now a quiet Davis Island is a quiet neighborhood with only one entrance to the island. There is very little traffic and there are plenty of people out and about walking their dogs, jogging, cycling, and kids playing. The Davis Island Park is quite large. There are two baseball fields and a few batting cages to the side. In front of one of the fields, there is a large playground with a large playset made of plastic. The surface of the floor is made of rubber, surrounded by grass and mulch. In front of the other field is a public pool. Still in its original state, the Ray, Roy E. Jenkin Pool was built in 1929. It is a Roman-style pool and has been dubbed a historic Davis Island Mark. The park is also part of the Majory Park Yacht Basin. The park marina has been awarded the Clean Marina. This means that the park has taken measures to maintain a clean and environmentally friendly facility. For the Davis Island Park, we interviewed two young people and two mothers and one single father. All four of the people who were interviewed had a job that required four-year education or some sort of certification. Generally, people feel that the island is quite safe. None of them have ever seen anything bad happen. There is constant surveillance from the police. The community members and the geographical setting also provide some security. The father commented, Because of the way the island is set up, where there is only one bridge entrance, not a lot of crime happens here. For our upper class parks, one of the parks we visited was Swan Park. While at that park, we encountered a middle-aged white female and interviewed her. This is what she had to say about the park. How long have you lived in this neighborhood? I've lived here for almost 14 years. Do you have any idea how long Swan Park has been here? This park has been here since I moved here and it's never changed. Uh, how come the park is so bare? There is no playground at all. 
Well, there was a plan to build a playground here. It was the Raymond James family that would like to build a playground, but the Beach Park Home Association filed a petition not to go through with the construction of the playground. Do you know why? The residents love the old oak trees that are all over the park, and they don't want to cut down the trees just for a playground. So what's the predominant phrase um, in this park, or oh, usually use this park? Mostly white racial background uses this park. The Beach Park community has a high percentage of white residents. Do you have any idea what is the percentage of African American who lives in this neighborhood, neighborhood and uses this, this park? About 2% of blacks live here, but I seldom see them here. I love this park, so I hang here almost every day with my dog. For the second park we visited in the upper class, we visited Palmasia Golf and Country Club. While there, we interviewed a middle-aged white woman, and this is what she had to say about the Well, thank you for accepting my invitation for interview about, your, about this private club. No problem. How long have you been a member of this club? About five years now. Is it just you who is a member? No, it's a family membership. It's actually my husband who is the primary member. Do you mind asking what does your husband do for a living? He's a lawyer. Are most members here are lawyers? Mostly. Business owners, doctors, lawyers, and some from other countries. They just come to the club and apply for, off, I mean, for membership? No, no, no. You need to have someone to sponsor you to join the club. Well, how much is the membership? Is it expensive? There are two types of membership, the golf club and the social club. We have the golf club status. Five years ago, the initiation fee was $15,000. Then you have to pay the monthly dues of 500 How about the racial makeup of the club members? It's mostly white. Only 1% are African American and 1% other ethnic background, Chinese. Do you know most of the members of this club? About 